Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I present the new updated version of the Shinkansen space plane. This is a space plane designed with many constraints in mind but the basic one is that uh, it is launched with a carrier plane that is identical except the carrier plane is filled with fuel and the space plane it only has fuel in the tail here in the propellant tanks. They are a separate part to ensure the balance of the space plane is correct. And so the propellant tanks are back here and then there is empty, well, not empty space, there's a cabin here and a cargo bay. But on the carrier plane that helps boost it up to, uh, well, let's say about 2,000 meters per second, uh, this entire area is filled with fuel. That's why it has to be so long. One other constraint was that the fuel tanks were 3.67 meters in diameter, which is the maximum diameter that can be transported by truck, just like it is a constraint for Falcon 9. Uh, so that is why they are that diameter. Uh, if you have watched some of my other videos, uh, the Tanks in the back here are identical to the ones on the second stage of the Sajita rocket, a rocket I designed related to this space plane. And the tank for the carrier plane's main tank, the large one that fills its space, is uh, the first stage of the Sajita rocket. And these are the engines from the second stage of the Sajita rocket, so there's two of them and two of those tanks. Anyway, it's all very complicated, but it's all very tightly designed. Unfortunately, a little bit too tightly designed, as it turns out, because it can barely get to orbit. Uh, but yeah, the body of this basically wraps around the tanks needed on the carrier plane. So the ones in the back here and then the one in the body. So that's why it's the length it is, that's why it's the shape it is to a large extent. Well, the benefit of that is that there is a lot of crew space, it's all on one deck instead of two decks like in the shuttle. And we could add more crew space uh, in the cargo bay here if we wanted to. Uh, so there's the cargo bay. And the update for 1.11 is, there are numerous things. Just to give you an idea, the first body, the first time I made it, it looked like that. And you can sort of see the visual, uh, the visual improvements here. Uh, and those are thanks to uh, basically, Substance Painter and using materials that were available both for free on the Substance Painter. Uh, well, there's sort of a sharing website for materials that have a lot of materials available. And so these tile textures that I got are somebody else's work and they are materials available for Substance Painter for free. And so that's a big improvement and just having Substance Painter itself as a method to do things really makes a difference. But I also changed the shape in the back here. You can see the the mesh is improved by quite a lot as I learned to use Blender. There was an interim version. So this one was not done with Substance Painter, but I improved the textures and the mesh somewhat. And so that was the second version, but there was still obvious issues in the back here that we do not have any more back here now. And so that was an improvement. But the main improvement has nothing to do with the exterior, actually. The main improvement is all in the interior. You can sort of see I've got this docking port adapter here. And actually, I thought I turned off highlighting, part highlighting, because, oh, there's actually a little bit of a gap there. Let's close that. This is a pass-through docking port, and that'll give you an idea what the improvements are but basically as we go in here we have a proper cockpit and these seats are like the command chairs in fact i just call them command chair they are functionally little seats that the kerbals can get out of and as a result there's no iva in in the shinkansen in this version of the shinkansen per se uh they are in command chairs sitting on it and then they can get out of the chairs and float around the cabin and potentially out the airlock. It is an airlock. It's uh, got a lid there but unfortunately because of animation constraints the lid opens when the cargo bay opens. Uh, I could probably make it a separate part so that it would have a animation that's separate. Now the textures for the inside are a different material for Substance Painter and I got 
these from ArtStation, so they, they were pay for, but I thought they were worth it, so I paid for them. And so that they were very nice, and I think I'll use them a lot, in fact. And also, other little details like these switches are from ArtStation and the front panel. I wanted to put a multi-function display here. We'll see. I haven't learned how to use raster prop monitor yet, but I'm thinking about that. So, yeah. But otherwise, we've got that going for us. And it all looks a lot better. But I want to test the pass-through functionality. In other words, I want to launch it into space. And first of all, check whether it launches into space properly in 1.11. And then we also want to have a Kerbal get out of their seat and float around. Because the complexity of this and the reason why it's not done very often uh, by other people is that you have to have colliders all over the place, right? It is a complicated collider situation to make this happen. And we don't want Kerbals accidentally floating out in the wrong position, etc. So, and of course the camera placement is awkward. So we'll have to see whether we can make use of this. But if we can make use of this, then I... Of course, I've already got a pass-through station, which the docking port was made for, and I've adapted the links to the pass-through system. Though with the links, I had fixed seats, and they weren't a separate command chair part. Uh, so the chairs are actual separate parts now, and that will solve one of the problems I noticed with the links. So that it's a part like that. And one of the problems I had with the links is putting them into the seats was awkward. In this case, putting them into the seats is not awkward at all. Uh, having them as separate parts, so that's good. Uh, the Another trick with this is I made, because of the cabin space that we have, I made the whole thing heavier, and right now we can barely get to orbit even slapping boosters on. So I am contemplating maybe changing my gas generator methane oxygen engines to being uh, stage combustion ones with, you know, like... Uh, the half stats for the Raptor engines, basically, because uh, they're currently 1,000 kilonewtons, so they're about half a Raptor engine. All right, anyway, to the... Well, I'll just take it out to the launch pad with the full stack, and then we'll talk about it further as it launches. So, here's how our assembly looks. The carrier plane, which is on this side, is still the old style because... I just wanted to distinguish two versions. Uh, otherwise, everything is very similar. The carry plane is also lighter because, of course, it doesn't have the crew cabin. It does have a separate part for the big tank. You can sort of see the tanks there, and then there's the big tank here uh, that fills most of the space. So those are actually separate parts clipped in. And then we have boosters because after I designed it, I realized that I designed the margins a little bit too tightly. So we have a problem there. Um, the Kerbals are in their command chairs. There are four of them. Okay, so controlling this is a bit of a thing. And so I generally let KOS do it. Yeah. Uh, some people might remember uh, an old design for Trimese one. In other words, three planes. That has the benefit that it's not as difficult to control it because there's symmetry around the central space plane. In other words, there's two booster planes. Having two booster planes makes it a lot easier to control it. Three, uh, I mean, having one booster plane and one space plane it's a little bit more difficult, <laughs> to say the least. It has to switch off engines on the carrier plane. Now, the carrier plane is cross-feeding fuel into the space plane. So, right now, the space plane is not using its own fuel in the back. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. That's another reason why the three-plane version works a little bit better. But the reason why I didn't do the three-plane version is because I couldn't figure out how... They, they often had very little vertical stabilizers on the wingtip or something like that, and it never seemed like that was going to be enough to me. As far as the vertical stabilizers are concerned, FAR definitely did not accept that. We had to put these vertical stabilizers on the top, which are procedural vertical stabilizers that were added in after the fact for FAR to be happy with it. And 
Yeah, obviously that prevents the stacking of three together. These boosters are nominally recoverable. They actually have floats. There are floats, there's a shroud for the engine, and there's parachutes. So, yeah. Let's deflate those for now, though. Nominally recoverable, but when they decouple off, it's at a time of high stress, so sometimes they explode or bump into each other or something like that. This is one case where the plumes look pretty good with real plume. Now, they don't look much like methane oxygen plumes, but this particular it is a kerosene plume instead of a methane oxygen one because when they configured the engines, they didn't have a methane oxygen plume with real plume yet. And I, I like it better. <laughs> I just like it better. So I'm keeping it. Okay, the boosters have separated. Oh, they might have gone off cleanly this time. Right? Those are identical to the engines on this side. This has five ED4 engines. Uh, this is, these are also ED4 engines, they're just vacuum. And now they've extended their vacuum nozzles. Again, about a thousand kilonewtons apiece, which is why we're reading seven thousand kilonewtons of thrust. Yeah, I turned off part highlighting here because when we go into the cabin in space and have the kerbals float about, having part highlighting is annoying because everything turns green. So we switched off to the two outer engines on the carrier plane to maintain balance. You can sort of see how much pitch we're using. We obviously don't want that to be maxed out. Functionally, this is just meant to be a crew carrier, but because it's delta V, the internal delta V on the Shinkansen space plane is so high, it's got so much fuel to work with, it can conduct moon missions very easily. It can go to the moon, dock with something, and then come back in an error break to a uh, low altitude. It's very light compared to a shuttle because it doesn't have the heavier cargo bay. It's not very tall, you know, and it's got smaller wings because it's not using cross range at all. It's got lighter engines because of the general design, because we've got the carrier plane doing part of the work here. And yeah, uh, overall, we also save some mass from electronics. The landing gear is still pretty heavy though, which is annoying. I tried to make it as small as I could, but it's still pretty heavy. Unfortunately, uh, the the change in windows has made it, given it sort of a sadder face, I feel. The windows have were reshaped to fit the cockpit that I put in there, and the cockpit was shaped actually more for the Shuttle Mark II that I have than for the Shinkansen, so it was actually shaped for the smaller space plane and these windows are reshaped around it. But... Yeah, I sort of got a sadder face, a puppy dog face, in a way, compared to the original array of the windows. We are down to only one engine on the carrier plane. And again, the fuel on the carrier plane is currently uh, fueling all three engines. Because of the crossfeed. And getting ready for carrier plane separation, you can see uh, surface velocity is 1800 or so. Oh, it doesn't seem to have separated. Whoops. Bit of an issue there. I don't know why the script didn't separate that off. Oh, it might have already gotten too high, that's why. It's supposed to do that before it gets to about 120 kilometers, maybe 110. I might have to adjust the script for that then. But yeah, I'm thinking of uh, turning these into conceptually staged combustion engines. Model-wise, they never had a gas generator exhaust separate 
a separate gas, gas generator exhaust because the gas generator exhaust is dumped back into the nozzle. So they look a lot like a staged combustion engine anyway. And it might get us the better performance we need in order to give this some actual payload capacity to low Earth orbit, given that I've already made it a little bit heavier compared to previous versions. Still not very heavy for its size. But plausible. I mean, plausible. Not with these new safety features people keep demanding, though. <laughs> anyway. Uh... But if they could make that uh, starship as uh, light as it is, then this is probably possible. Oh, we didn't quite make it. Okay. Well, we're a little bit short here, so I'm going to have to take stock of that situation. But while we are here, let's see if we can get a Kerbal out of the command chair. Jeb has left Jeb's seat and taken some food, water, and oxygen. That's important. Ah, well, there's the camera problem. All right. Can't go through the front, right? Right. Okay, seems legit. I did give the seats colliders, because otherwise, since they're separate parts now, you wouldn't be able to click on them otherwise. Okay, finally free Jeb here. It was floating about in various ways. The hatch should have a collider. Well, we don't seem to be able to go through it. Okay. So, open bay is how it works right now. He's using a lot of food, water, and oxygen really quickly suddenly, huh? I, mean, I, I think something's wrong with tackle support in this install. Okay, there are colliders in the airlock. But Jim has limited time here. But Jeb has successfully left the space plane. <laughs> and Jeb is out of EVA propellant. It's all... It's all space oddity now. Yep. Uh, something about EVA propellant consumption was really high too, huh? Consumption of everything was really high. Jeb's about to die. <laughs> um, oh no. Why? Why is this? Why did this happen? Well, I'll have to look into that one. Jeb sure looks happy though. But anyway, that's the idea. That's the improvement to the Shinkansen. Uh, there's a little bit of shimmering when we do this sort of EVA outside of the vehicle. Leaving the command chair. Not too sure if maybe going to map view and coming back helps. No, I think it stopped. All right. Well, it's a shame Jeb lost all the EVA propellant. We'll have to see. I wonder if... Uh, whoops. Oh, there is an exception. Nullable object must have a value. Hmm. Don't remember that one. I'll have to see about what that is for. I hope it's not to do with this system. Um, Uh-oh. Okay, well, infinite propellant does not seem to give us more EV propellant at the moment because we don't have any at all. It's interesting that uh, Jeb consumed a whole lot of food, water, and oxygen for a while, and then now isn't consuming much at all. So I don't know what's up with that. So that's something I'll have to look into. I did not anticipate this particular situation. I mean, EV propellant usually does not consume that quickly. So, I'll look into that, but for now, maybe it's, well, the pack is full. <laughs> I mean, at least it's uh, really heavy. Okay.
Yeah, maybe we should carry two EV packs and the, the parachute. That parachute is probably important. So I'm going to continue working on these pass-through systems and see if they're viable or not. In 1.11, it would be good because we have the engineering system, the construction system. And so we can literally just put little things inside the space plane in the in the secondary area, the, the hab area. And they could just pick stuff up and put it into a space station, for instance. We could have furnishings. We could add... I mean, if they, we could transfer pizza. So I have hopes, but yeah, some kinks need to be worked out. So with that being said, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.